something. <laughs> Act like you're doing something. Take the gas tank out of this truck. Y'all ain't ready for this. Slam this thing into that suburban. RIP, RIP Burt. So, we're about to pull to bed because we're replacing the fuel cell with a Boyd welding setup. Air motor still 340. I bet Mike's about to poke me or tickle me or something. Oh, no, there he I is. I wouldn't do that. I hey. wouldn't poke or tickle anybody. I'm what, not like that. What are we doing on your truck, Mike? Nothing. We're about to mess up the taillight wiring. Oh, it needed to be redone anyway. Yeah, he just didn't tell you that. <laughs> so we're creating we we're creating opportunities anyways. here creating opportunities and wear your gloves for those who are keeping up i have on men's gloves today these are my gloves yeah you can just yeah what's playing in here homie we're gonna put a boyd's fuel cell in here you're gonna move this cross member Whack off my beautiful Brian Jones exhaust. Oh. I'm trying to get on Brian Jones' wall as the most exhaust on one truck. <laughs> well, I think you... <laughs> He's done it three times on this truck. Yeah, I think we're going to be there. Hey, you do four and the fifth one's free or something, yeah. right? Hey, uh, you want to go show them the fuel cell? Yeah. Let's, let's go, go do that. Boyd Weldon also sends koozies. We're here to introduce you to Uncle Buck. I don't know. Is this 2.0? 2.5? Yeah, probably 2.0. We'll go 2.0. We're doing a big revamp on Uncle Buck for LST. It's February 5th and we're leave for LST on February 23rd. Working on a couple different trucks to get them ready to go because we're all going to be there at LST. Really pumped about that. We're going to have some cool trucks there and Uncle Buck is one of them and I'm super pumped about it. You're really going to see all this come together hopefully in this video. That's our plan is to go start to finish on the revamp. You've already seen us take the bed off Uncle Buck and the reason we did that is to put this Boyd fuel cell in. So this is a Boyd welding fuel cell. This unit, because Uncle Buck is LS swamp, has an Air Motor 340 EFI pump inside of it. And when you buy this tank, you can get it for a carbureted application. Then you can swap this out later on down the road if you go EFI. And one of the reasons why we went with this was Uncle Buck has always had some kind of fuel issue. Like the gas gauge will quit working or the pump is really loud. Eventually I was gonna do something anyway. Yep. So we were revamping the truck for LST doing all the other stuff we're doing, we're gonna put this underneath the bed. We got the super duper nice billet uh, mm. fuel neck. And this will go in the bed. I'll probably recess it down in there and screw this to the bed, but it comes with a little key and it just kind of flush mounts on there. Really, really nice piece. We've got the tank for the bed fill. It comes in a couple different variations yep. where this neck will be curved and you could come in from like a tail light, if you put a filler behind the tail light or up gas in, door on the side of the bed or something like that. Yeah. So you can get it with a different fill if you want to, but we just opted for the fill in the bed floor. Yeah, and I think it's gonna look really clean. You talk about recessing that a little bit more, you know, making yeah. it look super custom. Yeah, I mean, it's already it floor. Yeah, it's already really nice and custom, but yeah, yeah, you, sure. it gives you some options to, to make it awesome and, and do it your way. Yeah. The reason we trust these so much. Obviously, this is the exact same setup I have in Teddy. Exact same setup we put in the Blazer, and it comes sending unit, fuel pump, wiring that you need, rollover vent, another vent, a mounting tab. It's ready to install, ready to give you trouble-free mileage. I have put 35, 45,000 miles on the Air Motive Stealth 340 that was in Teddy originally in 2018. We've driven the wheels off that truck and never had a single issue out of this pump and it's quiet. So yep. that's what we're striving for yep. on Mike's truck. That's why we trust Dave. That's why we trust the Boyd Weldon team because these things are tried and true. And they throw in koozies and stickers. Yeah. We're gonna get moving, show you what else we're gonna be doing to this truck. Well, let's get going. Yeah, let's go. Uncle Buck 2.0. Hell yeah. Let's do it. What's your issue, Mike? You know, I'm gonna mount it on the thing. <laughs> but everything's upside down? We could just turn it upside down and then you'd have upside down holly. Yeah, it'd be like. Is that better than? Yellow. You know what I'm saying? What that means Yellow. You're in distress if it's upside yeah. down. It's like your pump's in distress. You know, it's like a flag <laughs> ball. You know, you turn your flag upside down and, yeah. you know, there's an issue. Yeah, makes sense. Sure, whatever. Holly, we're just giving you all sorts of hell tonight. We're giving but you all kinds of free marketing advice. That's right. That's what we do. That's all in fun. So, we're going to relocate the battery. 
because you know we're trying to do something super special under the hood to get rid of some of the clutter so we're going to mount the battery back behind the cab on the frame somewhere about here it's high enough where you ain't going to see it and it's low enough to where it's going to be underneath you know the bed floor i know we've said it before but this is one of the best upgrades you can do to clean up your engine bay these yeah. battery boxes are i don't know 60 bucks or something like that off you can buy them off amazon not saying you should do that but you buy them off amazon you buy them direct from gsi but they make a big improvement yeah the bolt or the the weld on i want to say the weld on ones are like 70 bucks yeah the bolt on ones have this whole reinforced Shigadier. You know, I think I must have put a, a weld on on Teddy then and bolted it on. Oh, really? Yeah, I probably just drilled some holes in that back panel. Yeah, we not what you're supposed to do at all. Mm, no, sir. We did. A, <laughs> <laughs> we did a weld on one on the blazer. The blazer yeah, that's right. Because it's you. welded like I think it's like this. Yeah, it is. In the back, yeah. Well, sweet. This is gonna be awesome. There's a factory mounting hole for a brake line clip here that. Um, so we're redoing the brakes. So I moved all the brake lines, or removed the brake lines mm -hmm. right now. And we're going to move the rear brake line to the driver's side. So it looks like I can use it for the top mounting hole of this here doodad. And then just drill a new bottom hole. Boom. Mm -hmm. That may be the last time we changed the oil, so July 2022. It is now February 2023. Baller. Listen, so if anybody ever tells you this is a mechanic owned truck, don't buy it because mechanics are the worst. <laughs> yeah. And Anna's been driving it. This is like Anna's truck. Is. Anna's Uncle Buck. Look at she's been doing burnouts. Doing burnouts. Take it to the gym and everything. That's why we got to take these wheels off and maybe. The nice thing though, when someone asks me about it, I say I bought it like this. I <laughs> do usually really? do not, yes, because yeah. I'm usually walking into a store and I do not feel like talking yes. at that moment. It's just, mm. yeah, no, I think yeah. that's a good response. It I don't is. know, I don't know much about it. I bought it, you like know, this. I mean, they see a girl driving it and you know, that's a great response. What is, oh, it's deer yeah. carcass. Oh no, I remember this. Yeah. Okay, are we, no, this was the plastic bag. Remember the that time? Bag. The plastic yeah. bag yeah. that Anna, but Mike hit the deer. Okay. Deer. When did you hit the deer? November 2022. Yeah, we we were leaving Heather's birthday and it was really late out. We were on Bobo Road and this exactly deer had just been hit. It was fresh oh. and he hit it head on. Everything. I made oh, him park the no. truck outside that night and he had to wash out deer guts the next day and clearly we did not get it all. And there's part of it there. Yeah. Is there anything else left? I mean, because that's pretty gross. Uncle Buck, give it. It's you know? kind of like jerky now, though. <laughs> yeah, I would say that's more like a jerky esque mm. kind of thing. <laughs> but the cool thing about it is you know just as much about this truck as Mike, which I love. I think that's awesome. Try. And can drive the hell out of this thing. And not change the oil. The engine bay on this truck has always been kind of like a sore subject because <laughs> uh, it was just kind of thrown together. We've done quite a bit of updates. I've had I've had some parts laying around for a while, and we finally decided to throw them on. The rack and pinion steering from Unisteer. Um, it's all on. I'm waiting on the U joint to go from the the new steering to the column, and then we got a new column going in from Scott Stiver, a little shortened column, just like we did on the mud truck. One sore subject of this truck for me has always been the steering column. It did have a tilt column in it. The tilt was all wobbly and wore out. The uh, ignition tumbler was always kind of sticky and it was always kind of just blech, you know. So just like on the mud truck, we got a hold of my buddy Scott Stiver, Keebler Elf on Instagram and he sent us one of his two and a half inch narrowed down columns and these things are super super awesome let me show you this here so what scott does is scott takes a factory column and rebuilds it puts a new ignition switch in it um, all the wiring is new the multi-function switch is new based on what your column you got the ignition tumbler is all new and so he disassembles it new bearings and everything takes the two and a half inches out paints it all up really nice 
replaces anything that's busted, broken, wore out in it, rebuilds it, and then ships it to you. And the mud trucks column, super tight. It's it's really nice to have that steering wheel, you know, two and a half inches away from your big old stomach, you know, because, you know, fat guys. But uh, yeah, this is a super rad piece. We did new lower ball joints, whole, all new upper control arms, four piston bare brakes. We did a Tejas fan shroud and two small 13 inch fans. We upgraded to the big block radiator the uh you know the 730 radiator cooling system in this truck was always giving me fits um it had just some like cobbled up fans in it and it was just not it was less than ideal <laughs> uh, i built a new intake the air filter now goes all the way down across the radiator into the front right behind the headlight so it's sucking in some nice coolish air and we've got the slosh tub inner fender well panels this is the passenger side panel it's already been fitted and everything and I primed and, and painted it. The color is leaves a little to be desired, but it's close enough for for now. I'll probably pull it back off and do a little better job of getting it to match. But what I always do is I'll lay these panels on the inside of the fender and I'll go through and mark where I can put nut certs in the fender where there's not a, a void or whatever. And I'll drill the inner fender holes or the inner fender panel holes and then set it back up there and then transfer those holes over to the actual fender and then put nut certs in it and then when you can bolt this whole panel in and have a really nice clean installation or if you're doing like a painted truck or something you could weld this whole panel in and then paint it you know if you wanted to do that also but I just kind of like to bolt them in. It's a little bit easier. We have slosh tubs also. They're out uh, getting a little special treatment right now. They've been fitted and everything, so that's good. But they're out getting a little something special done to them. Which we'll show them when it's time. We'll show. We'll, we'll show them when it's time. When the time is appropriate. What I like to do when I get the slosh tubs is they're super good quality. Some of the lines aren't very crisp where they come out of the mold. I'll fit the tub up in the truck roughly and see where my holes are going to be so I can tell how much I can trim off. And then I'll take some masking tape and make a nice straight line. And I'll come in here and straighten up the mold edge from where they cut it out of the mold. Because sometimes this can, this can be kind of, kind of, you know. So I'll come in and I'll grind and straighten it all out and make it look nice and even. And then I'll go to finish fitting it in the, in the actual fender. So on my fenders, I've got kind of a unique situation because the guy I bought my truck from had um, hacked this section of fender out. Um, so I've kind of got a unique situation where I've got to, you know, make some chicken salad here and get the slosh tub fit in here. I'll probably have to come through. Normally your slosh tub would bolt to the factory fasteners. Well, half of mine are gone. So what I'll do is I'll come in here and figure out where I do have meat and drill a hole and run a nut cert into this material and then attach the slosh tub that way instead of using the factory fasteners. And obviously I'm going to clean this up the best I can without sacrificing a lot of the fender. So one other thing you got to do when you do the a rack, the output pressure of your pump is too high for a rack. If you're running an LS pump, you need to downsize the pressure, decrease the pressure in your power steering pump. So we pulled the flow valve out of the power steering pump, shimmed it, put it back in. So now the, the pump is the proper pressure for the, the rack. So it's not darty at speed. It'll be kind of crazy. And then one other thing we did is Holly uh, two-piece valve covers with the coil covers. So we painted them to match. Another thing that's kind of a, an oversight on my part was these valve covers require Gen 5 LS coils or Gen 1 LS coils. So if you're running a truck motor, which this is like a Tahoe engine, the coils won't fit under the valve cover. So you have to change your coils out based on whatever coils you had before. And that's not necessarily an inexpensive thing. No, it was. It, um, it can it can cost. <laughs> it can cost a lot really quickly. Like these are just uh, OEMs. I forget the exact part number. I think it's a U413 part number. And I believe at O'Reilly's these are fifty dollars a piece. <laughs> so you could go into a four hundred dollar whoopsie daisy in a hurry. So if you want to do MSD coils, 
they're they're somewhere uh, north of seven hundred dollars plus right. the MSD coils require more voltage, so you gotta upgrade the coil pack harness and do all this other rigmarole. So if you're looking at doing these valve covers, you have to pay attention that you will have to do something with your coils or they will not fit under these LS valve covers. Another thing to re remember when you're doing these, you got to remove the cover to fill oil. So yeah, this oil will fill right here, yeah, you get which is oil. why this cover's not on because I have to change the oil in the truck, so I just didn't bother putting it on. Uh -huh. That's the thing missing is the brake booster, if you notice. Yeah, let's go and chit chat about that, which is over here. Brand new AMD emblem. Sign. Any GM licensed official product right there. Look at that, right from Auto Metal Direct. Old ass grill, new emblem. You got to come on over here and tell everybody what you, what you done done. Yeah, a huge fault of my own. <laughs> I have overdone it slightly. Captain America style almost. Yeah. So 2021, we went to Fall Revival and some genius decided to put the United by Trucks booth right next to the Master Power Brakes booth, right? Well, thank Casey Harris for that one. We didn't have yeah. anything to do with that. <laughs> so all weekend, I was like looking at this master cylinder, like that thing is rad. Ooh, I gotta get me one of them. The fall Revival passes, we go home or whatever, and I'm like, man, I, I, gotta get, I gotta get me one of the master cylinders. So I talked to the dudes at Master Power, we'll give you a booster, and then they did this custom paint scheme on the booster ring for me too. They just knocked it out of the park. This is a real 100% carbon fiber brake booster. It's not a cover, it's not a wrap, it's not a sticker, it's not, it's it's a carbon fiber brake booster. The dudes at Master Power, like they do crazy, heavily detailed stuff to start with, but like, I don't think they intended on somebody actually wanting this master <laughs> cylinder when they made it. And you know, me being the ridiculous person I am, I was like, yeah, give me that. Yeah, I'll take that one. Yeah, so I, I got the master and then they did the booster ring for me as like a, you know, a favor. So you can't get this color scheme from <laughs> Master Bomber. So this is the only- This is a Mike Howe edition. Yeah, this is the only one. And it's gonna like look totally ridiculous on my truck. This whole kit right here is all from Master Power. The brackets, the linkage rod, and then I actually have a, a proportioning valve also that's gonna mount down on the frame rail that's not pictured. This whole kit comes right from Master Power. So you can essentially bolt this all right in. It comes out of the box, bolt it together, bolt it in your truck. You will have to make some some lines because this does not have conventional lines. It's just got two dash threes out the bottom. The craftsmanship on this stuff is unreal. It's all ARP fasteners, Cerakoted, carbon fiber, you know, the Lord's fabric. The Lord's fabric. Yeah. We like them on our holsters yeah. and we like them on our brake boosters. Yeah, and then you can get um, your vacuum I guess this is like a check valve. Mm -hmm. You can get this. This is just a bar, but you can get it in the AN. Very if you cool. The AN, you can get the AN. Very cool. And they got different bore sizes for different brake applications. Booster is rebuildable. So if something ever happens to your booster, if you pressurize this booster and bust a diaphragm in it or whatever, you just unbolt it, send it to them, they'll fix it, send it back to you. So these are the the type of lines that I'm gonna be using to run on this master. So you just have a 3 16 stainless line, and then you have a, a flare, 37 degree flare, with the sleeve and the, and the nut. These are incredibly hard to make. You have to have the right brake line. This is kind of where it gets finicky. If you go on Amazon and buy 3 16 brake line stainless, um, you're gonna have a bad day. You really need to get like a kneeled brake line. Annealed means it's been softened so you can form it. If you just get regular stainless line, it's gonna be, it's gonna work hard and really, really quickly. So as soon as you go to do like anything with it, it'll harden up and crack and it'll just lead to leaks and, and you will not have a good time. You really have to do your due diligence and make sure that you find a good supplier for your brake lines. Like Arizona High Test, uh, he he sells super good brake lines. So yeah, Jason's, brake lines from him. yeah, Jason's the man, sorry to interrupt you there. No, yeah, Jason's like super good dude. So he, he actually sells all of this stuff, the brake line, the tube nuts, the tube sleeves, any of the other fittings that you would need, you can get it all from him. Sweet. Yeah. Well, uh, let's go show him what this looked like because we've had this mocked up and it looks killer. <laughs>
of some boots. I'm gonna show you mine in a second, but we got some for Mike too. He hadn't seen them yet. I got mine on. So here's Mike's. Michael, it's new boot day. So I'm rocking the Marin eight inch. And the thing I like about these already is that when you lace, when you tighten up the laces, they actually cinch down and stay there. And you can either use the hook here or you can thread it through like a normal, like a normal eyelet. No slip grip. It's the Brunt Marin. Let's see what Mike got. We turn. Much like your tools that I hang out with, these are tools that I wear. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh golly. Oh golly, Mike. Oh, yeah, look at these. Dang. So these are, I don't know how you pronounce this, bull, the Bulldog? There it is. Bulldog. But they're the comp toe. So don't lose your little piggies when you run over it with the forklift or something. Yeah. They look pretty well constructed. I like this piping at the top. Just extra little detail. I yeah. worked on my feet for a long time. <laughs> right. So I always wore like super expensive boots like Red Wings or Same. Georgia boots or something like that. Yeah. Not only because like people, oh, they're so comfortable. I noticed on cheaper boots, like I had a, a pair of uh, Doc Martens one time. Yeah. And everybody's like, you gotta get Doc Martens, you gotta get Doc Martens. The sole was so soft. Anytime, like especially in my profession, anytime you stepped on anything that was even remotely warm, yeah. it would melt into the sole. Like yeah. a drill chip or anything, it would be melted into the sole of the boot. And then you would have it in there all the time. Yeah, like, or have a big gash in your sole. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be like, can y'all send us those back? We're gonna try these things out in the shop. They're already feeling good, starting to break in. I've had mine on all morning. Mike just threw his on, but thanks Brunt Workwear. We love them. These are some super duper giant brakes. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> this is Bear's uh, six piston, 14 inch rotor rear kit for a 10, 12 volt GM rear end. When we started putting the truck together, you know, I was like, man, we gotta do something with the rear brakes. Cause we had a disc brake kit that I'd already purchased that was a 13 inch with a, like a, like a Mustang caliper or something like that. After I got the fronts and the rears, I was like, ah, these don't really match all that well. So I'm gonna change it up. And then that's where this kit comes in. So it's super good quality. They come with the backing plate that's got integrated uh, parking brake and everything inside it. You take your axle part, this slides on the back, bolts on, you use your factory hardware, the mounting bracket for the caliper, um, all of its super nice quality. Yeah, I mean, you've really got three components here. Like you said, this has the parking brake, the backing plate, and the caliper mounting provision all in one piece. And then you've got the big giant 14 inch rotor, mm -hmm. and then you got the caliper. And that's, I mean, that consists of the rear kit, obviously, for each side, but pretty cool how, like you said, it's all in this nice, nice, neat little package. It's all one piece of machine aluminum. It's, uh, it's good quality. The, the, the fitment is, is supreme. So it just slides on here, and then you take your factory hardware and just run it in the back. I believe the instructions say if you have a 71 to 76, uh, 10 or 12 volt, you're gonna have to replace this hardware with uh, some hardware that you'll have to go purchase because the 7176 has a different different axle flange, different size bolts uh, for some reason. Uncle Buck getting all the love. Yeah. And while Mike's doing that, I'm gonna run you up here. Show you the front setup real quick. 13 inch four piston. Four piston. Yeah. And this is, Mike already had this on the shelf. So basically we matched the rear setup uh, to the front setup and, and improved it in the rear. Um, and Mike will probably end up up in the caliper piston at some point on this. But for now, this is a killer, killer setup. Yeah, and that's a CPP modular spindle with the, the hub. One thing you didn't mention was the QA1 sway bar here. Freshly installed as of 10 o'clock last night. Sweet. I really can't wait for you guys to see this truck at LST. Um, 
lots of just really awesome upgrades that are gonna make this thing a killer, killer, killer street machine. Just awesome road trip truck. And uh, it's gonna look awesome with these billets on it too. So we're gonna show you those on later in this video. So what's the torque spec you got going there, Mike? 45 foot pounds. And then this is the point when you go reinstall your C-clips and your pins and all that other stuff in your, in your diff. On the other axle, which I didn't film, but somebody had beat the crap out of it with a hammer so this edge was all banged up and the rotor wouldn't slide on so you might have to come in here and do a little filing or sanding or something to get that rotor to come back on the on that mounting flange So this bracket will float on these pins. Okay, so it's got a little give, huh? Yeah, and there is a shimming procedure that you'll have to do to shim this bracket evenly out or in to the rotor. So you'll have to shim it. Not only will you have to shim the caliper uh, in and out, but you have to shim it to and fro, so towards and away from the rotor. So, and you also not only do you have to shim it like in and out, but you have to make it even. So you'll have to, like if the, the caliper is touching more towards the back, you'll have to shim the back farther than the front oh. to make sure that the pad contacts the rotor evenly. Otherwise the pad will like, obviously you're not gonna be using the whole pad, so you ain't gonna be getting the whole brake. And the caliper comes with the pads already in it, and it's got the, the anti-squealer thingies on the pads, so the pads won't be squealing. If you get your calipers mixed up, remember the bleeder always goes towards the top, and then it just slides on the back, like so. And then you put these two socket-headed Allen bolts in here. Doing. Like as you can see, like if your caliper is like a little, little close at the top, you know you'll want to take some shims out of the top, and vice versa. And our caliper looks like it's pretty good. Like we'll tighten it up, obviously, but it looks like it's pretty good on the contact surface of the rotor, so we shouldn't have to shim it too far in and out. Sweet. So, man, that looks killer. Yeah. I mean, I know there's like a whole functional aspect to this and I, I am now a believer in like, you know, good quality brakes, but man, if that doesn't just look good. Yeah, cause we do 13 inch brakes on mud, mm -hmm. 13 inch Willwoods, and even with manual brakes. So it doesn't even have a power assist at all on right. it. Right. If you smash that pedal as hard as your leg will go, like you'll go through the window. <laughs> I mean, it's true. So they don't lock up, they, yep. they don't do none of that. I mean, I imagine in the rain it would probably be sketchy, but what's not sketchy in the rain? For sure, for sure. So. Yeah, good quality brakes makes all the difference. Yeah. Now one other thing, they send a, a brake line kit with this to tie into these factory brake lines, but I would just assume make a whole new brake line, get rid of all this crusty old brake lines and stuff, because this has been on the truck since 1986. Mm -hmm. So it's a little reassurance that you ain't gonna have any issues. Just like they make a stainless brake line kit, Jesse makes a kit, just buy all new brake lines. It's gonna be a couple hundred more dollars, but in the long run, it's gonna save you some heartache. Plus bending this thing around and doing all the weird wookie doos they want you to do with it just to get the braided line to go to it it doesn't look good <laughs> ever we'll just make a whole new line So these 
are my new wheels for the truck. Again, I've had them for a little while. I could never come up with the excuse to put them on. I think it's time. They're 22 by 10s. And then in the fronts, we have a 22 by eight and a half with a five and a quarter backspace. The rear is a five inch backspace. For the rears, we're gonna run a 305 30 22. The fronts are a 265 35 22. So they're the same size tire, front and rear, same side wall height, front and rear. So uh, yeah, no hot rod stance here. No, real flat. Got Harbor powder coated the center for me. They were uh, black, but I had them change. They're a little dusty, but I had them change the powder coat center on the rears. We changed it to a custom color that I picked out called Burnt Reynolds. Which is so great. Yeah. Burnt Reynolds. So it's like a brown. I didn't want to go too bronzy. I didn't want to go too brown. So it's kind of like in the center. So it really, it really ties in with the patina and the color of the, the brake calipers. So it, it looks really, really good on there. The rears were used. Rob got them on Marketplace and the fronts are actually brand new wheels. Okay, so there is a bit of a backstory here. I actually ended up buying these two off Marketplace a couple of years back. And like Mike said, they were black centers, which is how you get them from Raceline. I mean, you can order them custom colors, but when you just order them directly from you, you either get them raw or with that black center. So they had the black center and I actually thought these were front wheels. I never test fitted them on a truck. The guy told me they were five on five and they were 22 eight and a half. I just didn't look at them that closely. So I ended up ordering two other wheels that we were gonna run on the rear. Well, me and Mike worked out a deal where the, he actually got these wheels from me and went to mount them up and this was not a front wheel. This is a 2210, five inch backspace. So ended up ordering two brand new fronts to match with the rears and that's really, like, in a nutshell, how, how you ended up with these, right? Yeah. The actual rears, which are supposed to go on the truck, they're quite a bit wider um, with quite a bit more offset our backspace so we didn't have time to do all that shenanigans before we go to st this year so i actually had a set of these tires rick cheeseman gave me so we are just put these tires on these wheels since we already had them and they were already powder coated whoopsie daisy yep so we're just gonna run these for now and then when we get back from lst we'll get the rear end narrowed we're gonna have to from my calculations, we have to take like almost five and a half inches out of the rear end, which puts the backing, space, backing plate right, like almost touching the leaf spring. So we're gonna end up having to do a whole suspension on the back of this truck just to get the wheels to fit. It's kind of a snowball effect, you know, but. As a lot of people on this channel know. Yeah. <laughs> we tried to d decrease the snowball, at least for the moment, because we just don't have a ton of time. So still on leaf springs, still static drop, you know, upgrading the brakes, which this will obviously carry over to when he does narrow the axle, but we're running the 2210s, you know, blessed to, to have those and actually have the other set. So we got options, I'm, yeah. I'm pumped about that. So these are my rain wheels. Yeah, these are the rain wheels. But just to give you guys, we'll just let you in on the secret. Mike's got 22 12s with a lip that you just, I mean, you can lay your hand and half your arm in there. So as he just described, it's gonna take some narrowing of the axle and the, the axle housing. And we don't have all that time right now. So thankfully we've got these. He can run these and it still make a huge improvement. And that's really what we're going for. We're, we're overhauling Uncle Buck, as you know, and making this thing just a couple notches better than it was. First bleed on the brakes, everything's good, no leaks. Just finished the battery cables. Yeah, we're gonna see if it'll start again. I'm excited. Me too. Uh, it makes all the wonderful sound. <laughs> That's doing what it's supposed to do. Hey, we put 10 gallons in a 20 gallon tank and we are at half a tank. Come on, send me cinder. Yeah. Send me cinder. I even heard the sub kick on. That's making all the right noises. You didn't mess with the uh, fuel rail or anything, did you? Just one fitting. Let's see. Just double, double check. No oil puking or anything like that. Did 
dude every time. Good job, dude. Hi, Good job. Killed it. Yeah! All the power, all the fuel. This is the proportioning valve, and then this is the regulator filter. So I put the proportioning valve in the back so that way it wasn't cluttering up my engine bay. And I figured that if it was back here, it could get to a little easier. Yeah. Then, like, if it was down the frame rail or something. Yeah. I dig it. What? Say what now? Go ahead and pump it again. Go ahead and pump again. I bet you back got this whooped.
Look at you go. I tell you what, you sure are fancy. You drilling tap that? Yo. Kind of getting to the end here of uh, upgrades on Uncle Buck. And you got something awesome here on this, uh, this little cart that we should tell the folks about. Yeah, so this is a Slosh Tubs mild tub for AC, factory AC. And I actually took and had them wrapped by a company here local called Raptor Graphics in Dallas, Georgia. And they hooked it up with a paisley pattern. So it's kind of like a, like a handkerchief. You yeah. Know? <laughs> the underhood is kind of kind of like a uh, canvas, I guess. I don't yeah. know what you'd say. But I did the Star Spangled Brake Booster and Master Sounder, and I just kind of figured that there was a lot of people out there wrapping inner fenders with like a plaid or Mexican blanket and stuff. And I was like, man, I'm going to do one. I'm going to do something else. I want to do handkerchief. Yeah. You know? So. This is what I came up with. I found this pattern on the inner webs and we blew it up and uh, matched the color the best we could and, and this is what we came up with. And I think the dudes that wrapped it did a phenomenal job. It looks killer. Yeah, I agree. I think it looks super awesome. And I honestly think it's gonna fit under the, uh, with the aesthetic of what you got going under the hood really nicely. It's like we talked about before, it's not, some crazy wild color plaid that also has some dark blue in it. It's primarily dark blue like the truck yeah. And I think that's what makes it you know what makes it cool. Yeah, you got some white in there a little black in there Kind of mix it up a little bit give it a different design Sweet So that's a slosh tub mild tub wrapped and he Mike's already got them test fitted So we're gonna throw those things in Uncle Buck. You can see Uncle Buck's up on the lift and then uh, We're gonna give you guys a full walk around of this truck and go over all the upgrades on it for LST. Yeah. You getting pumped about LST? Yeah, man, I'm excited. It's, it's happening. Yeah, I'm uh, super excited to take a couple days off, to be honest with you. <laughs> Drive the old truck. Yeah. <laughs> it hasn't been driven in a while, so. Well, it's got a lot of new goodies. Today's Monday, and we leave on Thursday morning. So, mud's pretty well dialed in. Uncle Buck's about to be completely dialed in. Wesley's getting his truck buffed by hooks and that'll be back today or tomorrow. And then Churchill's had a bunch of stuff going on in his truck. So I was gone this weekend. They got tackling some stuff. So they tell me they got some good GoPro footage. So we're gonna take a look at that. Um, but yeah, things are moving. We're coming to Texas with a bunch of cool square bodies. Something for everyone. I know that's the hardest part. You tell me to put the camera down if you need me to. Oh. Uh, so Mike's got these coated on the underside. You can still see one section there is drying. <laughs> <laughs> but we're being a little impatient getting these things in. <laughs>
Shelby done slammed this thing into that Suburban. <laughs> It'll be my worst nightmare. I think we're a hell of a video. <laughs> Apparently my boots first wash. Your boots got them brunts first wash. Look at that, son. Weston, say what's up, man. What's up, man? <laughs> Wesley's just full of it today. We're about to go for this. Uh, I'm about to take my shirt off. It's gonna be one of them. Oh, uh, we going wet. Wet and wild. Wet and wild. Gone wild. Wet and wild. Our work is going wild. <laughs> Uncle Buck going wild. That's probably why I titled title this video. And I gotta get all the mud off from where we went mudding. Yeah, you can thank the back of our shop for that. I can't take no loss. I don't even know what it costs. I hit the ground then it go off. Yeah, hit the ground then it go off. Yeah, I can't take no loss. I don't even know what it costs. Yeah, I hit the ground then it go off. Yeah, hit the ground then it go off. Yeah, yeah, run it, run it. Oh, I really feel it's my time. Think it's my year. Yeah, yeah, I really feel it's my time. Think it's my year. Yeah, yeah, I really feel it's my time. Think it's my year. Yeah, yeah, I really feel it's my time. Think it's my hand ready. So bad, my selfish thing been bad. Gotta keep on chugging. Ran through everything in front of me. Might smoke been heavy. Got a whole agenda. Can't inspire to get a hit. So bump that. It's no surrender. Got a dollar flipped up. I'm trying to get an NFT to get them when they're handing crypto on. All right, guys. This is what we've been waiting for. That's what Mike's been waiting for. I've been waiting for it. And I hope Mike's been waiting for it. He's been doing a lot of work on this truck. Put some killer parts on here. And uh, now it's time to go through and show you everything on here in a complete package. I'm gonna tell you what all's been done after I catch this water bottle from blowing across the parking lot. This thing looks awesome. We're going to Texas. Oh yeah, hold on, Wesley, gotta show you something. Wesley got a little, got a couple things in the works too. Ready. <laughs> oh, oh, she man. is ready. She's oh ready. man. Woo! Mm. Okay, mm. we're gonna start right here. Mainly what you can see is the wheels, obviously. So we did some 22 by eight and a halfs in the front, 22 by tens in the rear. We're running a 265, 30, five yep. up front and then a 305 30 in the rear and then also what we did was bear brakes which is my favorite thing ever because they look so dang cool i think so too yeah let I me mean, look at it and we did the hugger orange because it's just the right amount of contrast look it looks like you know the brakes are there but they're not like poking you in the eye you know what i mean yep when you look at it so when it's it's crazy like how this color looks so different on the shelf yeah but then when you get it on here especially on a solid color truck with a wheel that's got a more of a muted color like it lets the caliper become a little more of the the accent versus the the wheel color itself and i think it just looks yeah it looks cool yeah then one other thing we we did was <clears throat> you'll notice these wheels are not black these yeah. wheels are brown and they're brown metallic and they're prismatic powders color and it is called burnt reynolds yeah. Yeah, man little, what a color oh to the old man burt to the old man p r.i.p burt yeah uh, another little thing you did under here too though qa1 sway bar yep tucked back in there oh yeah help yeah. this thing uh stay flat and handle a little better yeah, we'll see, you know, with the lowered stance, um, there's always an alignment issue with the factory sway bar. Some people try and get around it with the different brackets, the lower brackets, but QA1 does the whole thing better with sway bar end lengths that are, you know, more geometry correct, so. Sweet, I love it. So the setup, just to remind everybody, I know we've talked about it already earlier in the video, but the brake setup on the front. 13 inch rotor, four piston calipers in the front, and then in the rear we have a 14 inch rotor with a six piston caliper. I love it, let's go show them that real quick. All right, so here we are at the back of the truck. That's all I got. That's cool. Because <laughs> we're looking at 22 tens with a five inch backspace. Yeah. Six piston bear caliper, 14 inch rotor, and a 305 30 22, correct? Mm-hmm. Yep. Man. Yeah. And of course, Uncle Buck's beautiful patina. We've always had some kind of like fuel issue with the truck ever since it was first put together. So, and the gas tank was super tiny. So I got tired of all that. And we got a Boyd fuel cell with their flush mount filler for the bed. 
and that's going on in the back now and it's super rad the pump in there is super quiet you know normally you turn the key forward and, you're like, and then you wait and then it shuts off and then you start it well now i'm just like and yeah, whatever and I, there it is hear it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and the gas gauge we put 10 gallons of gas in it's 20 gallon tank half tank on the gauge so you know the, the gauge in there is working premium sometimes you get an aftermarket sending unit you fill it up and it's you know an eighth of a tank high eighth of a tank low so but yeah. this is working premium you don't just have this cap as we talked about in the in the beginning of this video you know you have a filler neck that or a neck that runs down to the actual fill on the on the uh on the tank itself and yeah the you know, tank's got an air motive stealth 340 in it with a i believe is it a 90 ohm sender in this truck or is yep. it yeah it's 90 ohm sender and it's just the perfect combination these are as we talked about these are the the same combination we put in the blazer same combination i put in teddy um we've now got it in uncle buck and it's just a tried and true setup and this air motive stealth 340 is actually what's in mud too we swapped it out um for the regular 255 lph that was in it and they're just quiet and they work they just yeah. function so hopefully that's what's going to happen on the way to texas yeah. in a couple of days too and i believe they're good for they're over 600 horsepower oh yeah for yeah. sure so you could really juice it up if you needed to yep and these tanks also uh boyd sells them you don't have to have the filler neck in the in the, no. in the floor like this. He sells them with the neck that comes out and points out the frame rail this way. So you can run your filler neck up over here or yep. really get super fancy. And I guess if you really wanted to, you could hose it all the way back up to the factory filler neck if you wanted to. Tell everybody what the motor and trans is because I know that we're about to pop this hood and talk about that. Um, so what is it real quick? So the motor and trans is an LS. It's a 5.3 with a 4L60. Um, it's mostly stock. It does need a bigger converter in it. Um, it's, that's also been an issue with the truck since I put it together. We'll get there, but um, <laughs> it's got a BTR cam in it. Uh, nothing super crazy. Yeah, something uh, like a stage two type. Yeah, nothing type insane. Um, it's still running pump gas. It's still mostly got vacuum. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but it does have two and a half inch uh, dual exhaust on it with some Flowmaster 40 series mufflers and the tailpipes come right out the back and exit just before the bumper. Um, so I think it sounds super good. Oh man, a lot of people do too. Yeah, I, I cruise it all the time. And then for the cooling system on the truck, we do have a factory big block C10 radiator, um, 730 I think is the part number. And then, uh, Tejas fan shroud and then two small 13 inch fans and uh, then I got a custom made little intake that I made for it and uh, yeah so it's it's mostly stock LS small cam but that cam with that Flowmaster 40s are really what makes it sound oh yeah, just yeah so it premium super good yeah yeah so one thing we did on the inside was the truck's column has always been busted so the blinkers never worked right and it was always crunchy whenever you turned it and uh it was super loose so we teamed up again with my buddy scott and got one of his shortened columns dude i tell you premium premium product i love how the steering wheel is not like you know kissing me in the belly no more <laughs> and uh the column's all rebuilt so it's fresh and brand new um and he does a super good job of just putting it together so the fit and finish on the column is, is really good too so it's all painted up new internals so not only did you get a column you got some cool stuff to connect it to we have a unisteer rack and pinion in here i believe it's a mustang 2 derivative rack with their mounts and everything that they make you can get the rack set up a couple different ways you can buy it for a small block chevy which will come with the power steering bracket and some other stuff or you can just call them and they have a special part number that's not listed that you can get just the rack in the steering shaft and then uh i think they have some part numbers for the hoses also uh, i bought the hoses they didn't work but uh <laughs> you know whatever so yeah so we got unisteer rack and pinion connected to the column with their uh, their steering universals and their steering shaft. And it's all stainless, so you don't have to worry about it rusting up. Yeah, it sure does look nice and shiny. Yeah. I like it. Nothing then, else to see here, though. Yeah, nothing else. We're all done. You can close the hood. Yeah, we're done here. <laughs> but for serious, <laughs> <laughs> what is this uh, above it? I know we've talked about it a little bit, but just give everybody a recap since it's the end of the video and that's what we're doing. Yeah, so this is the Master Powers 
carbon fiber booster and master powers billet x series master cylinder they had this master cylinder on display it's just like a ode to america and i had to have it so when i contacted them i was like i, I want that master cylinder and they're like oh well you know it's not really for sale and i was like bs it ain't like I want. <laughs> so they were like really cool guys so they actually did the ring on the booster for me also so the whole kit is from master power the mounting bracket in the back all the linkages bolts everything come right from them so you can get the whole kit from the pedal all the way forward from master power yeah when you spend the rest of your day guessing on everything it is nice to just kind of slide something on there every now and again and be like oh well um like as you can tell these are raised inner fenders from slosh tubs these are the mild tubs with factory ac you can see they're molded all around the factory ac we paired that with their inner fender uh cover panels also like i discussed earlier we had some custom cutage going on on my fenders so we covered it all up with their inner panels so and these things fit like premium they and do look really good i mean really good oh yeah and then we wrapped them with the handkerchief slash paisley pattern because you know it fits my personality you got to be a little extra mike yeah i'm a little extra you're a little extra you're like quiet extra you know we can't be like wesley and just be like me you know you gonna take that? <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> okay, so inner fender panels, slosh tubs, inner fenders, slosh tubs, the mild. We got the master power brake. We got the unisteer um, rack and pinion with all the joints and, and intermediate shafts and steering that you need uh, connected to the Scott Stivers column. Then you did a little extra paintage here on the, the Vortec or on the LS cover, but you got a nice little addition that I keep forgetting about, and it's these valve covers. Yeah, those are Holly's two-piece finned uh, valve covers. We got them raw and then painted them. And uh, one thing you will have to note is if you put these on your stock, like 5360LS, um, you will have to change your coil packs. Because if you have a truck motor, they will not fit truck coil packs. So you will need to get like a Gen one gen 5 ls coil pack to go under these because otherwise they're too tall and they won't they won't fit on there it says in the instructions bold underlined red letters exclamation point blah 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 these don't fit but i ignored that because they're instructions you know you can't just read the instructions on stuff so last minute we had to get a different coil pack sorry yeah are you happy with it yeah dude i think it looks good like i kind of had my you know my like doubts on the, the inner fenders but now that they're done and in there i think i did uh i think i did myself a good you know i think so too and what's funny is like you literally just went and picked these up like an hour or two ago yeah, like, yeah i mean this like is like the, the new is still very much here on the inner fenders yeah. so i dig it i think it looks cool and like whenever we you get into cleaning up firewall getting that the way you want yeah. to even redialing the suspension in which is the next phase you've done yourself a great service to have a lot of cool stuff to start with oh yeah for sure and these you are know. These are great. I love it. I love it. Anything else you want to say? Don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. There you go, kids. Message from Uncle Mike with Uncle Buck. Yeah. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of United by Trucks. Hope you guys have enjoyed the Uncle Buck 2.0. This thing's ready to go to LST, and I'm ready to film it all the way there. I'm pumped. Uh, well, to just be a small part of this truck's journey hanging with mike doing this stuff so fun and it just turned out killer so we're gonna see you at lst conroe texas this friday and saturday so we'll see you there if you hadn't subscribed to the channel please consider doing so definitely leave a comment let us know what your favorite part of uncle buck's revampness is and uh we'll catch you next time right here on united by trucks cue the music